back to Camp Jackson. For those of you that are returning, for anybody new, make sure you subscribe. So today, we're doing cooking again. And this one is going to be some good comfort food. We're talking a big old fat chicken pot pie. Everything from scratch. So stay tuned and cue the intro. Okay, we'll go over these ingredients, but I will put a list of them in the description along with the directions. It's not that hard to do. It does seem like there's quite a bit, but for what you get out of this pie, it's worth every minute of it. Food is a labor of love. And I love food and I love to cook. Well, there's our oven. It's preheated to 375 degrees. So if you haven't already, get yours preheated. Now what we have here, we have three cups of chicken stock, one cup of milk, two whole chicken breasts that I've pre-cooked. And when I pre-cook these, I will also throw a chicken bouillon cube in with them just to impart some more flavor into that chicken. It's roughly a pound and a half of chicken that has been cubed up into bite-sized pieces. We've got roughly a cup and a half to two cups of potatoes diced about the same size. And a lot of this, when I dice it up, I like big chunks of food in there. Um, when I take a bite of something, when I put my fork in that pot pie, I want to know, I want to be able to see a piece of chicken, a piece of carrot, some celery, potato. I want to know what I'm biting into. If you dice it up real small, you might as well make soup. Just go ahead and puree it and make soup out of it. So potatoes, peas, and these are just frozen peas. There's roughly three quarters of a cup there. Small carrots, and I use the baby carrots, they're a lot easier to dice up. And these are, again, cut into chunks about the same size. You can cut them into whatever size you like. But I have about a cup and a half of those. I have roughly three quarters of a cup of celery. We have about a half a cup of onion. We have some fresh parsley. Well, I say fresh, this is actually dried parsley. We have a teaspoon or three quarters of a teaspoon of celery seed. We have one teaspoon of kosher salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, nine tablespoons of butter, unsalted, and nine tablespoons of flour. So the first thing we're gonna do here is get all this pre-cooked, because I've found that when you if you put the vegetables in there just raw, they come out and they're, they're not fully cooked yet. I want to poach them or parboil them just long enough where they still have a bite, but they're about halfway cooked. So I do that with the celery, the carrots, and the potatoes, and as well the chicken was pre-cooked. So, and I do cook these in separate pots because they will cook at different times. And I don't want to have to try and separate them out of the pot. This way I can get each one just to the doneness that I want. So I'm going to get the other camera set up over the stove here. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our butter melted and we're going to start cooking our onions just till they become translucent. Then we're going to mix in our flour and make our roux out of that which is what will thicken the entire sauce. So let me get you set up over here and we'll go from there. Oh, before I forget, the pie crust. We already have a video up on how to make a pie crust. So I didn't bother filming any of that this time. But what I have done is got my pie crust into the pan and I pre-baked it. Nothing worse than a soggy raw pie crust on the bottom of the pan. If you've ever had a piece of pie and the bottom of it is like that, where it's just like raw dough, that's horrible. Don't do that to your guest. So I pre-baked the bottom half of the shell. Once we get everything into the pan, then I will go ahead and roll out the top, get it on there, and we'll get it off into the oven. Okay, we've got our butter melting. As long as I can keep my big head out of the way of the camera, 
And like I said, this is nine tablespoons of butter and about a half of a yellow onion. We'll get that in there. And I brought over everything to the stove with me except the parsley. We're going to add that in later. So let's get this butter melted all the way and get these onions just till they're translucent. This will take a few minutes. We'll adjust that heat if we need to. And give this about five to ten minutes. We'll check it and stir it every few minutes. All right. Looks like we're there. We don't want this butter to turn though, so we're going to turn that heat down. Now we're going to add in nine tablespoons of flour. We'll start stirring that in to make this roux. We're going to add in our celery seed, our black pepper, and our kosher salt. Get that mixed together here. We just want to cook this just for a couple of minutes to get that raw taste out of the flour. We don't want to brown it like we're making a roux for, say, a gumbo or anything. If your pan gets too hot on you, simply pull it off the heat for a second. And don't stop stirring. This is one of those times, do not walk away from it and don't quit stirring. Alright. Like we're there, start adding in this chicken broth. Or in this case, it's actual stock. And that is three cups. And we're going to add in one cup of whole milk. And what I will do here is switch to a whisk. So we can get all that, make sure all the flour is broke up and everything's incorporated real well. And this will become the sauce for our pie. And once we have this mixed and simmering, pretty well then we're going to just let it simmer until it gets thick enough to coat the back of a spoon and when that time comes I'll show you but just keep whisking and simmering once you have it mixed you can kind of take a break from the whisking for a moment all right let's get this thickened up and we'll be back in just a minute Okay, our sauce is thickened up the way we want it to. And as I said before, we want it to be able to coat the back of a spoon. And by that, if you look at the spoon here, you can see the line through it. So that's about where we want it. We're going to turn that heat off. And by all means, taste it. Taste what you cook. If you don't taste it, you don't know what you're getting. That's pretty good, but it needs more salt, I think. So we're going to go with another few pinches of kosher salt here. Maybe a little more pepper. Adjust the seasonings to the way you like them. I 
I would add more celery seed, but we have actual celery going in it. So I don't want to overpower that because celery can do that real quickly as well as uh, bell peppers. They can quickly overpower the flavor of a dish. All right, we got that. It's about as thick as we want it. It's not quite to a thick gravy, but still nice and smooth. Uh oh, it's my driveway alarm. I think I'm gonna have to stop and go see who's here. Let me slide this off of the heat and we're gonna let that cool. All right, now comes the easy part. We've got our sauce made. We have our pie crust pre-baked for the bottom of it. We have our ingredients and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take everything that we've pre-cooked, our chicken, our carrots, our celery, our peas. And I usually save the potatoes for last because sometimes they'll be a little bit softer and I don't want to mush them up. Let's get this mixed together real good. This is your filling for it here. All right, let's get them potatoes in there. And as with any recipe, if you don't like potatoes in yours, don't put them in there. If you like more peas, add more peas. This is one of those things that's completely customizable, if that's a word. Yeah, it is. You can add whatever you want or take away whatever you don't want. All right, all we did was take our filling and you got that into the skillet here that we're using. And of course you could do these as individuals. You could put them in ramekins such as this with no crust on the bottom, just fill it with your filling, your sauce, cover it with a pie crust. Um, I have some little cast iron ones up here that I could do them in. Me, I like the way this looks, the rustic and that just that big, fat, thick slice of pot pie. All right, we're gonna take our sauce here. Get that out of the way. Now put a lid over the sauce to help keep it from uh, getting a skin on top. Now I wanna mix in just a little bit of the parsley in here. And a couple good pinches of it. I'm gonna have to, this one's so thick. I am going to have to put some filling, some sauce, some more filling, some more sauce. There we go. Now we can get some more sauce in there. Get that mixed in. And anybody that shows you a video or a recipe and it looks like everything is just perfect it doesn't always work that way sometimes you have to make adjustments and be prepared for that we get that mixed in we'll get some more on there and some more sauce We'll just keep filling this thing up until I'm happy with it. And I might have enough left over to make a couple of little ones. I can always make me a couple extra small ones just so I can take them to work and have them for lunch. All I'll have to do is take them over to one of the ovens and get them heated up.
little more sauce. And I told you this was a big pot pie. Look at my stomach. <laughs> I like to eat. Some more filling on there. I'm happy with that. Now, let me get my hands cleaned up, get the top crust rolled out. I've got it chilling in the refrigerator. I'm gonna get it on here and we'll get this off into the oven. All right, as you can see, we got everything enclosed in here and that pie is fat. It will drop down some as it cooks. And what I did was I took a little bit of egg wash and went around the edge of the pre-baked crust and then just use my fingers to try and press that down. We want to try and keep it from leaking as much as possible. And then I just roughly cut it because it may shrink a bit on me. So, and I like that rustic look where it just kind of hangs over. I don't want a perfect fresh from the factory look. Last thing we need is some bent holes in the top. So we're going to cut a few slits in this. Just so the steam can vent out. So, then we're going to brush the top of this with our egg wash. And off to the oven she goes. And just lightly brush it. And if you're not familiar with an egg wash, it is simply one egg and one tablespoon of water. And just whisk them together. And that will help the crust brown. Give it that beautiful brown, glossy, golden color. the oven she goes and I will I will put a uh, cookie sheet or a baking pan underneath this um, in case anything does leak out I don't want it dripping into the bottom of the stove for my wife's sake because as good as these recipes are as much as I love them as much as I love to cook the real hero here is my wife bless her heart after all my cooking and all the dishes I go through the measuring cups and tasting spoons and pans my wife cleans it all up after me. And she works a full-time job 50 plus hours a week. So bless her heart. And baby, if you're watching this, I love you and thank you. But back to our pie. Let's get this in the oven. 45 minutes to one hour on 375. Once it's done, it's going to come out and we're going to let it cool for at least an hour before we try and slice into it. If you try and do it while it's still hot, your your sauce in there will just your cream sauce will just run everywhere because it's going to be bubbling hot so we're going to give it at least an hour once it comes out once i do i'll throw some pictures up in here and show you how it turned out all righty folks as you can see the pie was done my wife and I, of course, we already had our fair share of it. And this pie will make about 10 servings total. Um, as you can see, it is a very thick pie. And it is chilled considerably uh, in order to be able to cut it like that. Like I said, if you cut it warm, it will tend to, all the filling will tend to try and run out on you. And what I did, I baked this one for one hour. The crust is nice and golden brown, and I took an instant read thermometer and put down into the center of the filling, and it was, you want it to reach at least 165 degrees in the center of the filling, and your crust will be a nice golden brown, and you're done. So, if you like this, be sure and let me know, leave me a comment, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you all for watching.